Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. All right, guys, welcome back. I am joined by Michelle Dickey. You know Michelle uh, as a, a, a best selling author, the founder at Consulting for Heightened Awareness. And uh, welcome, Michelle. Hi, Casey. Great to be back. How are you? I'm terrific. Can you explain to the people, just uh, to refresh, what um, uh, the Consulting for Heightened Awareness is and what you do and who you're helping? Absolutely. Consulting for Heightened Awareness is a non-denominational ministry that specializes in narcissistic abuse and trauma recovery. So I'm a consultant, coach, trauma specialist, and as Casey said, a, a good selling author. <laughs> okay. And we've got the recent book, Real Events of Narcissistic Abuse, by the way, is getting more reviews and is becoming highly recommended for survivors and for those who have to have a little more to learn about red flag. But that's what that book is for. And you can get your copy at Amazon or right on the website. And the website is CDHR wdrmd.org all right yeah and, and you do a lot of work um making people aware of the abusers that are out there because they're like sharks right and uh, you may not know it but they might be preying on you oh yeah absolutely that's a good way to put it like sharks <laughs> definitely um we also refer to them as predators predators they're, okay. yeah they're yeah they're always looking for what has become known as narcissistic supply. What that means is they're looking for a, you know, a target right, to, to feed on and get emotional reactions, preferably negative ones, to get reactions out of the target. Mm -hmm. Just to, yeah, just, it, it, it's, it's really sick and twisted because one thing we learn about these abusers is that it's all entertainment for them. They think it's funny deep down underneath it all That's and crazy. it's not yeah it's, it's not yeah. because what they're essentially doing is traumatizing that target and yeah. so we want to be mindful also going forward because what happens during the recovery and healing process for a lot of survivors okay that we go through those normal stages that are going to occur and one of them is let's say you didn't know somebody you dated, like say 10 years ago, you didn't realize that they also were an abuser. But since let's say you experienced what we have come, come to call the straw that breaks the camel's back. So yeah. speak, yeah. you suddenly, oh my gosh, this is not normal. And this right. is, you know, once that happens, you're going to you're going to remember I tell people because God is going to help you remember a lot of little things that he's going to need you to remember going forward because this is going to happen this is why we call the the hoovering it's all part of you have the love bomb devalue discarding phase because we realize that ultimately it's the survivor that has to do the final discard but mm -hmm. they will hoover and what you know that stems from the vacuum cleaner the hoovers are designed to try to suck the target back in to get them back to come back to the abuser and we learn not to do that because if you do then the abuse is going to be you know sometimes 10 times worse the second time around but what's happening right now for several is they've got some exes that are coming back and but they're picking up quicker on the red flags that's why we are there's a few of us now who are saying to watch out for exes from a long time ago trying to get back into your life because this is what they'll do they'll see that you're healing oh yeah they'll be able to sense this through that spiritual energy they'll be able to sense it that you are getting to a better place in the healing process and so the abuser wants to come back and see if they could suck the person back in and they'll often come up with i'm gonna give you all an example here they'll often come up with some little story it's gonna be like a fairy tale type okay they'll say things like you were the one that got away. I can't believe I let you go. Certain things like that. That's a red flag because it's been how long now? And we also know that they haven't changed. Mm -hmm. So that's the other thing. Yeah, abusers that are just, that's what they do. They don't want to change. That's something I know it takes a while to accept that, but they really don't. They don't want to change because they always, you know, they're after 
what they want when they want it in the here and now. Mm -hmm. That's it. They don't care about anything else but pleasing their own sick, twisted fantasies and things like that. So they're going to try to come back. And this is why we say no contact. And if you have to limit contact and to always be mindful and watch out for the red flag. And I will tell you this, especially as the survivor is leveling up. And what we mean by that is, you know, they're getting further along their healing process. Uh -huh. They're getting stronger again. They're getting back on their feet. And here's a pattern I want everyone to keep in mind that we have co now come to realize that during midsummer to late summer, and I, I'll share y'all just how this happened to me as well to help you put it in a better perspective. Okay, okay. Okay, they'll come around, you know, mid to late summer and what they're trying, they'll start trying to line up a winter snuggle bunny. That's right. So once they're able to do that, they secure that supply, the target, okay, in their web of deceit. And then once the abuser gets tired of that target and bored with them, after the winter is over, okay, and then spring starts to come around, right? And it's not, it doesn't matter where you live, if it's like kind of warm the whole time, it's the abusers are going by the actual pattern of the season. That's okay. what that is. Mm -hmm. okay. So if, yeah, it's that, it, it, as far as whether your area experiences the fluctuation in temperature, that has nothing to do with this. It's the season because okay. you know, just, just like with everything that God does with us happens in season. Okay. Well, the abuser, the AKA the enemy also operate, but in a more of a literal sense, so to speak. Okay. So around springtime, they'll start the discarding of that winter snuggle bunny and start trying to line up summertime fun supply. Oh my God. Yes. That's the pattern. Wow. Now, they're always abusers are always looking for supply, but the, the times of the year that they're most active. And this, is, this was something that I was like, whoa, that's so true. Because this past spring, <laughs> my Instagram DM, oh my goodness, snakes were coming out of the woodwork. I was like, you got to be kidding me. I was like, nope, 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 blah, blah. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I know what you're up to. And then now, here recently, mid to late summer. I just got one. I was like, how childish is this? Don't don't come out there. And I'm like, can we be friends? Really? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like, you see by, well, and then here's the thing. You go over to their profile and you check it and it has nothing. I mean, nothing but selfies where you can tell that they are clearly adoring or admiring themselves. Mm -hmm. That's a huge red flag right a, there. Okay. Yeah, I was going to ask you if you could tell us some of those red flags because people need to know that. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. So that's why we always say, so you know, when they have the picture of themselves uh, next to their car or uh, everything's just a picture of themselves. It's like 50 pictures of themselves. That's that's what we're, we're looking for. We're, we're looking not to be uh, around. Well, yeah, in, yeah, in a sense. And then this is where that discernment comes in, because there is a difference between marketing. Now, if they are in, you know, look at what they're into. Like, are they a sales person? And they're just, they're trying to sell that car. So they've uh, got a photo. Oh, they're, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see where, I see where it differs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause yeah, those of us with businesses, obviously we've got to do some self-promotion. Do some right? branding and stuff. Yeah. I got yeah, it. Yeah. Like my like the t-shirt, no, uh, mm. no trespassing allowed in the kingdom of God. Okay. okay? I like it. So like that, that kind of thing we have to I always promote. like your t-shirts. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Some of the other ones were were, were pretty, uh, pretty funny. That one was, um, uh, what was the one that you had? It was a narcissist. It was narcissist. What, uh, what was the one you had last week or the week before? It was silly narc. God can see in the dark too. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, it is because it's so true. Because these abusers, they they don't. It's. I've had a lot of survivors ask me too. They say. Well, do they not know that God is watching them? And I was like, you know, they don't really care. They don't give a, you know what? Right. And they, they don't really care. And I know it takes a while to, you know, let that sink in because there's like, well, how, how can they, because it's like, do they have a conscience? Not really. Probably not. <laughs> no. I'm, well, they wouldn't go around treating people badly if they right. did. Right. 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 The, there you go. I, that's just a little bit of common sense right there. Yeah. But what are some other that, red flags that you could tell us about? Okay. Well, 
oh, well, and it goes along with being able to discern if they're. Oh, let me didn't let me not stop you. Let, let me let me uh, let me just take a step back and let you go with this because I know you're going to get to it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. When you if you're looking at their profile and all you see is the selfies, again, you always assess some other things with it, but you'll be able to you can tell it's um, kind of like an expression. Let's say uh, okay. It, it, one good one on for a female abuser that that one of the things they love to do is be like you know showing a bunch of things and then they're just kind of they're doing these um what we would call the uh spirit of seduction type you know movements along with it you want to watch out for that guy the the male narcissistic abusers do this too but in a different way uh, they'll be like, you know, trying to show off something like your, you know, their six pack abs or something oh, like that all the time. Okay. But yeah, but if they are in the business for like, let's say beach body. Okay. Those of yeah. us who do those workouts, if they're in the business for promoting that type of workout or whatever, that's different. Mm -hmm. They're not trying. So there's no another part of that discernment. There's a lot of things to take in and pay attention to, but see, that's the thing. Here's the red flag that we all learn to pay better attention to is when a, an abuser comes at us, but then, and they're really, really, really pushy. That's because they don't want to give us the time to do this assessment, to take a look at the bigger picture. They don't want us because they know if we do that, that we're going to catch something. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. So, but, and that's why they come at you really fast. They'll come at you really, really quick. And I'll share a story with you all. I've got this in um, the CD space over there on Quora, you know, the battling cognitive dissonance part. And I remember a fellow survivor made the comment, he happens to be a male. We, I want to be clear here. Both men and women are targeted by these abusers, okay? It's not all just one-sided, all right? I would tell you, from the clientele base, I'm pretty 50-50 on that, okay? Wow. So even, you know, men definitely our targets and victims of abuse as well. Mm -hmm. So one of them, he, he wrote after he read this story of what, <laughs> when I identified one at a school function and he read it and he was like, wow, I'm really glad that I'm not a female after reading this. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> because wow. what that, what this abuser did, okay. He was in a different program than I I'm in. And so he, he, uh, he was doing his dissertation stuff and all of that. I, it was the final night of the event, okay? It was our residency. It was the final night. So I decided, okay, I'm gonna go and relax. I'm gonna go take myself to dinner. So I go down to one of the, the hotel uh, restaurant bar areas, right? So I, and I'm by myself. I just wanna get myself a steak dinner. Yeah. So I sit down, I'm looking at the menu and I, you know, he was sitting probably four or five seats away. But I could, I, you, you can send from somebody it just kind of like, even if they're just staring at you out of the corner of their eye, you can start to sense that. So oh, eventually, yeah. you, yeah. So you, and so I, I looked over eventually, and he said hello. Of course, I'm gonna be nice. I said hello, and he, you know, asked my name. I asked his. I don't remember what it is now, mm -hmm. but <laughs> I did <laughs> save the text messages because I turned him into a case study lickety split. Wow. So because as he started talking in the the program that he's in, I already have a degree in. So I was like, okay, so naturally, you know, it, his topic, it was interesting to me. So I'm like, yeah, sure. So he, he pulls his little book out and sharing that with me, school related. That's great. That's fine. I told him I was just a good topic. I said, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm run with it. You know, you can really help a lot of people with that. And then, okay, after apparently, you know, that, that I was just being kind, right? You know, just being the kind person. So then he pulls out his phone. Oh, and let the fun begin. Start showing me, oh, trying to talk about how much money he got. Talking really, really, really fast, too, oh. at the same time. Mm-hmm. How much money he got, who he knows, this big name he knows. Started yeah, bragging, okay? And I'm like, oh, really? That's nice. That's nice. And I was, like, in my mind going, mm, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See so, ya. Yeah. yeah. Can you kind of just uh, speed this up? Uh, my steak dinner is coming. Yeah. <laughs> Well, eventually the uh, the steak dinner came. I got done eating, and so uh -huh. he's like, "Hey," he goes, "Well, hey." I kept making small to letting him do most of the talking, right, obviously. Right. And so I said, "I'm just taking notes." 
And I'm like, okay, so I, let's go ahead and exchange numbers. Sure, why not? I will see what comes next. Because <laughs> so I can always predict what was coming next. Uh -huh. So then he was like, you want to go for a stroll? And I was like, oh, sure, why not? I haven't been out of the, you know, for all the, the all the, the courses, the classes and things like that that we've had to attend. So I was like, sure, let's take a stroll. We went to one of the uh, a local bar or whatever and got to see the Ferris wheel and some of the scenery. It was really nice. I got some pictures and stuff. And I was kind of, I, was, I guess you could say I was playing along a little bit. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. That's what I was Gathering at. data. Yeah, <laughs> gathering data. It's what we do. Mm -hmm. And so then once that, you know, again, and he, here's the red flag. What he uh, did was he said, oh, he said, you know, you've got, you've got a good personality, right? And anytime someone does that, I go, hmm, okay. Hmm, now let's see, let's see what's next. And I'm like, okay, thank you. Hmm, okay. So we're walking back to the hotel now. And what does he do? Grabs my hand. I was like, wow. Okay. So I, I just, you know, took my hand back and I said, my, my, I said a little touchy feely there. Yeah. And he just, you know, he turned in front of me. It's like, there's a bunch of people, you know, walking around the pavilion per se. Okay. The mm -hmm. area. And a bunch of people walking around. And so he's trying to pass it off as if we just came back from a date. And so he goes to try to, you know, give me a hug. And I kind of dodged a little <laughs> to the side. And then he tried, he tried to kiss me, but I oh my God. Away. I, I backed up and I said, Whoa. I said, Crazy. No. Yeah. I was like, no, no. I said, you have a good night. I'll see you later. And so oh, I go back great. to the room. I know it was really crazy. I go back to my room and I just stood there. I closed the door and I stood there and I counted five, four, three, two, one. And boom, that text message came. Oh, right no. <laughs> uh, Didn't did you feel the chemistry? I felt is that what it, I, tell, is I, that what it said? I, that's exactly what he said. I was <laughs> like, what is he talking about? What a weirdo. I, you're not kidding. So I, I'm going to be putting more about that story out elsewhere later on. But it was one of those experiences. And then I'll just wrap that part up because I'm, I'm telling you, it was oh. then the next morning, our final event that we had to go to before you know leaving to go home. And so I noticed that he was standing. See, because all of us had the app. So we knew, like, if you knew what program the person was in, then you would know what room they were going to be at. Okay. okay. So apparently he did that. He looked up where I was going to be at for my final session the next morning. And I noticed as I caught him out of my peripheral standing in front of the door oh, no. to, that, to that room that I had to go in. But I had about, you know, eight minutes left. And I was like, whoa. So I just ducked and went outside for a little bit and waited i said you know what even if i'm a minute late i was like you know my professor he's gonna be fine with that because <laughs> if i have to explain why i'll let him know because i'm like i i'm not gonna ha i'm not about to have a stalker here right but, that's what it appears that's what it appears you got going on yes exactly i was like oh my gosh you know it, it was oh yeah it was an, it was a good case study i got like like i said i got a lot of good notes and and learned a lot of lessons but it was just in one night that's how these narcissistic abusers operate they they try to move so they want to move so fast and and that's the big reason right there they want to try to move quickly so that you you know the target doesn't have enough time to they are, like, like get to know them or you know all of the things because they don't want us to see those red flags but when you can spot them that quick oh <laughs> yeah you 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 that hey that is the best way to yeah. be yeah about that stuff so oh. yeah what a but crazy I, story I, <laughs> thanks for sharing hey, that it's oh, after, cool, but that's good for people to hear stuff like that to see how these people operate um but and to see time. those red flags uh -huh. yep how, how the red flag can show up in real time that's definitely a big one right there because you know, normal people were like, no, you want to take your time, get to know the person and right. stuff like that. It was yeah. like, you know, just rush right into it. But the abusers, yeah, they, they, they got to, especially as they age. And this one was definitely, oh gosh, I, I wanted to say he told, he was in his fifties. So that should give you 
a pretty decent idea because the older they get, the faster they'll try to move. Mm. I see. Okay. So, so he did a lot of things right there. Um, he was trying to impress you. He uh, uh, was aggressive. Um, he touched you. And then when you said, please, you know, please, let's just go our own ways. Got, you know, good luck. Then he per, uh, persists to try and get a hold of you with a text message uh, and then is following you the next day. So I think he hit the trifecta uh, or the superfecta on all the bad things that you could do to somebody, right? Yeah, I, I, it is. It really is. And so, you know, it's like, yeah, because I knew that as long as I did not respond to any more messages and I was able to get away from him and know that, okay, he go, you know, we're going home after this. Yeah. <laughs> so once I got back to the house, the people be like, well, did he Hoover? No, because I, you know, he pretty much, once he realized I wasn't, he, he going knew that you weren't, you, you weren't, uh, uh, you weren't a, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you weren't bait or a, uh, what, what, what's, what, uh, what's the predator goes after the, uh, he, he realized I wasn't going to make good supply. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Yep. Loud yep. and clear. Yeah, no doubt. Um, uh, okay. So, so, um, Michelle, uh, that's a, that, that's a great story. Um, can you, um, tell us a little bit more for people who are in, uh, the space where, they might be able, they might be duped for someone coming back into their lives, maybe 10 years later, I've changed. What are things that are they going to hear? Uh, what more can you tell them? Because that's pretty important that they know that. Okay. Well, the, okay. One thing to pay attention to, especially let's say you had something happen in your life. Okay. I'm going to just let's, for, as an example, you've recently lost a loved one. Okay. It's an unfortunate thing, but what they'll do is if they get wind of that, okay, an ex from a long time ago, if they get wind of that, then they'll use that oh. to try to weasel the way back in. Yes. And I mean, it'll, it will come off as sounding genuine. Like they'll say, oh, I heard about, you know, so-and-so passing, so, yeah. my condolences. And that's fine and nice. Okay. Yeah. And that's to get your attention. So once they've got your attention, then they'll come on with the subtle love bombing. And saying things like, you were the one that got away. I, or, and they'll also say stuff like, you know, I, I can't, I, I can't, I think about you all the time. Ah, that's a big one right there. You're the one that got away. I think about you all the time. But after they've got your attention. Okay. So, yeah, so you always, you'll, you'll start to notice the red flag once you're well versed in them. Absolutely. You'll start to pick up on that and they'll start to, it, it, it'll sound, here's the best way I can put it for everyone. It'll sound like a Cinderella fairy tale story. Mm -hmm. Okay. What the, whatever they're crafting up, however, they're, you know, remember they're smooth talkers. And what did God tell us about that? Yes. That they're, that their speech is going to be like, uh, like butter. Okay. It's smooth as oil, all those different metaphors in scripture. God tells us. Okay. And then of course, you'll be know, talking about the backhanded compliment. You yeah, know, James, yeah. James 310, where the blessing and the curse comes out at the same time. Mm -hmm. So you'll start to pick up on those types of things. Keep, like keep they'll the say, confused. exactly. Exactly. They'll say something nice. And then with a devaluing uh, at the back end, you pull know, it back gotta, somehow. Yeah. That okay, push yeah. pull. If you start to sense any type of push pull, like you automatically know, wait a minute, this is not matching that. Okay. That's one contradiction right. actions, not matching words. And then you'll start to sense, wait a second. They're trying to play push pull with our emotion and you can sense that. And as uh -huh. soon as you, Yes, as soon as you sense that they're trying to push you up, like put you on a pedestal and then pull you back down with, with kind of some kind of condescending statement, then that's that push-pull. Okay. Okay, and that's a, lot, that's a lot of what kind of, that, that, that's what traumatizes people, is that constant push-pull yeah. on the emotion. Because right. it, it does, it starts to mess things up the normal neurological functioning of the brain chemistry it starts to mess with that 
And that's it's deliberate by the abuser, obviously, because they want the target to stay in a state of confusion so that they'll continue to excuse the bad behaviors with things like, oh, they're just having a bad day. No, 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 no. That's who they really are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got you. Hey, Michelle Dickey, uh, another great show, great information. Let me give you the last word. And please let us let us know how to get in touch with you, how to get your services. OK, please. You got you got the last word. Great show. Thank you. Okay, yes, you're welcome, and thank you. You can find all the products, books, and everything that we do right there on the website. And of course, we're on Instagram, we've got a business Facebook page, we've got a YouTube channel. The name of that is Narcissism and Cognitive Distance. We've got videos all about breaking the trauma bond and a bunch of other good things that will help you identify red flags, especially a case study I had with online that happened on Facebook, that's over there. It's titled Nine Red Flags of, narcissistic, of a Narcissistic Abuser. And how I, and I share all of them on how I was able to spot just right within like not even 72 hours, boom, 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 just from being online. That'll help a lot of y'all out right there, especially in the online world. Cause yeah. you can, you, yeah, you can spot them there too. All right, and then you can always contact me at 704-245-4340 with any additional questions. And you can send an email to michelle.dickey at cdhrwdrmd.org. Sending love and light to all fellow warriors. Thank you for watching, listening, and for your support. Until next time, let's show some gratitude to the Heavenly Father and you keep being you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Michelle Dickey, everybody, and we'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.